Namaste everyone. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Today we will discuss about uh, daily news analysis. Before that, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe and like and share our video. First news is more than 11 lakh electric battery operated vehicles are registered in India according to Wahan database of April 2022. See why this is news because electric vehicles have taken a battery explosion in the recent uh, days. Therefore, Government of India has constituted an expert panel to probe the recent series of battery explosions in electric vehicles. Therefore, electric vehicles recently have become viable transportation system in our country and in our, all over the world also. So, this electric vehicles, these electric vehicles use lithium ion battery. Therefore, they are called Leon battery for the commercial use after 1990s. So this is the news about the electric vehicles, which is in recent news. Next news is whether Hindi is national language or not in our country. Because of uh, Bollywood actors and uh, uh, so many actors of our country have discussed about this issue. Therefore, it is under the discussion Hindi, whether it is national language, whether Hindi is national language or not. There is no national language. According to the constitution of India, there is no national language in our country. But, but according to Article 343, according to Article 343 of Indian constitution, the official language of the union government, union government shall be Hindi, which is in to be it is to be in Devanagari script. Very important. This is the news Hindi, which is in Devanagari script. This is to be used as an official language in our country under the Article 343 of Indian Constitution. Under Article 351, the Indian Constitution imposes the Constitution itself imposes a duty upon the center, I mean central government, to promote the spread and development of Hindi language for the official uses in our country because because up to 1963 up, up to 1963 India was Indian government was using officially about only English language therefore government of India has enacted an act in parliament in 1963 that is official languages act in 1963 to make use of English in addition to Hindi compulsorily in certain cases for the official uses. So, according to the report, the number of native Hindi speakers in our country is around 44%. 44%, it is less than 50%. It is less than 50% in our country. And the English language also shall continue to be used for the official purposes of the union government. And then, according to the present scenario, there are 22 languages in our country. There are 22 languages spoken in India which are officially registered in the 8th schedule of the Indian Constitution. 8th schedule of the Indian Constitution. And also 17th part of Indian Constitution, 17, 17th part of Indian Constitution reveals about the official languages in our country. It reveals under the articles of 343 to 343 to 351, Article 351, reveals about, reveal about the official languages in our country. And then there are presently, currently 22 languages spoken in India, which are officially registered in the Constitution of India, which is under 8th schedule. They are, they specify, they, they specify, I mean the 8th schedule of the Indian Constitution specifies 22 languages in our country. But very importantly, basically when constitution of India came into force, when constitution of India came into force, originally 14 languages were existed. Assami, Bengali, Gujarat, Hindi, Kannada, Kashmiri, Malayalam, Marathi, Odia, Punjabi, Sanskrit, Tamil, Telugu and Urdu. These languages were constituted in original constitution, basic constitution. But in 1967, 21st Amendment of Indian Constitution Act added Sindhi language as 15th language 
and then after that in 1992 71st amendment of indian constitution act added konkani language manipuri and nepali three languages as 16th 17th and 18th languages were added to the indian constitution eighth schedule and then after that in 2003 92nd amendment of constitution act added bodo language dongri language maithili and santali languages as 19th 20th 21st and 22nd languages of india therefore first originally 14 languages were there in 1917 in 1967 15 languages languages were added, was added and in 1992 three languages were added and then it became 18 in 1992 and then in 2003 by adding four languages it became 22 official languages which are currently run under official languages registration under the constitution of india coming to the next news this india has fallen eight places eight places from 142 to 150 in 2022 about world press index i mean india ranked 150 in 2022 in world press index see this index is actually calculated around uh, up about 180 countries in the world so the world press freedom index this is the world press freedom index also says very importantly the situation in kashmir remains worrisome and reporters are often harassed by police and paramilitaries because of the restrictions imposed on Kashmir to avoid the uh, violence which is taken place in Kashmir. Therefore, the report is uh, said that India has ranked 150 by falling down of about eight places from the last year. So, coming to other countries, Norway is the first country which has taken World Press Index for rank, and then USA ranked 42nd rank. And then North Korea is lost, is in last place. North Korea is in last place. And coming to the comparing to comparing India to other countries, Sudan has uh, 151st rank. Russia got 155 rank. Pakistan got 157 rank. Bangladesh got 166 second rank. And China got 175 rank. Norway is always first in so many indexes. It is the logic we don't know. And then next news is about kelo india youth games recently in bangalore in bangalore kelo india university game was conducted and done and was champion champion by jain university jain dim university jain university won the championship in kelo india university games of 2021 which is the second edition actually this was started in 2018 by Prime Minister Narendra Modi as a, a big platform of sports events in our country. First edition was done. After that, uh, COVID was occurred. Therefore, due to COVID situations, second edition was held in the present year. Therefore, therefore, according to that, youth games also are also conducted. This youth games actually being held in Haryana. Chief Minister of Haryana has announced Haryana will be the first for the fourth season of Kelo India 22. I mean 2022. I mean youth games have taken fourth season. Okay, therefore, to encourage very importantly, what is the objective of this game introduced in 2018 to encourage youths of India to take part in various sports events? This is the main reason and the biggest ever sporting events of India. This is considered as the biggest ever sporting event of India. Very importantly, to encourage youth of our country to take part in various sports events. Therefore, this is for the news. Next, coming to the important news that India's merchandise exports rose. At the same time, imports also rose. 20, about 24.2%. I mean, record, this is according to the report, in 2021-22, record-breaking highest ever exports in April. As like 
imports are also raised due to petroleum crude oil um, and other products due to the import of petroleum and crude oil imports of india also raised about 81% while those of gold also but uh, gold also contracted about 73% but india has raised imports also as like exports rise therefore increase in mercantile trade deficit trade deficit from 15 billion dollar in april 2021 to 20 billion dollar in april 2022 this actually led for trade deficit in our country there are three concepts in the international trade concept trade deficit and trade surplus and balance to trade i mean trade deficit means imports imports value is more than export value this is called this is called trade deficit if that is trade surplus export value will be more than import value this is trade surplus if that is balanced trade import and export values both are same this is in the case of balanced trade export value and import value are same therefore india is now what is suffering because more imports are leading for trade deficit for india because of india is suffering with trade deficit this is in news because of highest ever record breaking export activities are done as like import also increase in our country coming to the next news <clears throat> stresses on importance of organic farming very important for sustainable and stable development i mean sustainable development is the burning issue in each and every country in the world because the sustainable development means the development activities which are considered with environmental concern environmental concern environmental concern development activities have to be done by considering environmental concepts i mean environmental consideration i mean by saving environment i mean what sustainable development reveals the meaning it is the development which cannot be compromised with future generations that is sustainable development and stable development see why is this in news because vice president of india venkaiah naidu expressed happiness over the fact that may that many hilly states have successfully adopted organic farming in our country many hilly states i mean we can call them a northeast regions northeast region states have adopted already organic farming system in our country very importantly what india or the whole world is currently using the chemical farming is the reason for degradation of soil degradation of soil due to the overuse of pesticides and fertilizers so far very importantly this is important sikkim is the only state in our country which has announced fully organic state sikkim is the only state which has announced fully organic state i think it, it was announced in 2015 2015 as like awareness about organic farming was rising and is being raised in recent phenomena 50% of in uh, 50% of increase in organic exports in 2018-19 in three years back and coming to the last year 2020 21 51% increase in the production of organic products in our country has been raised i mean this shows that the awareness regarding organic products has been raised in our country recently regarding organic farming very importantly government of india announced paramparagat krishi vikas yojana in 2015 paramparagat krishi vikas yojana pk vy under the ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare farmers actually will be motivated to organic farming under this program therefore this program was announced see this yojana promotes to make agricultural activities by using traditional resources i mean by green green manures green manures organic manures used by 
cow dung and everything and green manures by leaves of palm uh, leaves of uh, trees and other things uh, which are available in the rural area these are used to do agricultural activities therefore traditional resources are used under organic uh, for organic farming under paramparagat krishi vikas yojana which promotes and it is an extended component of soil health management very importantly as because of uh, organic uh, chemical farming chemical farming causes for degradation of soil degradation of soil soil health was damaged therefore soil health management has been a component and it is an extended component of soil health management which is undertaken by a program that is national mission on sustainable agriculture this is a national mission which has taken part to promote soil health management by organic farming activities and another thing regarding organic farming government of india announced in 2019 budget in 2019 budget about zero budget natural farming zero budget natural farming is it is called zbnf zbnf zero budget natural farming see very importantly this is chemical free agricultural method it is traditional indian practices actually it is completely traditional indian practices i mean there is no use of chemical fertilizer there is no use of chemical pesticides but but they use they use only they use only organic manure organic manure and organic organic pesticides and own seeds which have been developed by themselves in the past crops own seeds i mean there is no cost therefore as there is no cost because of these activities i mean own seeds are used no cost for no purchasing for seeds and organic manure and green manures are developed by themselves by using cows cow dung and everything therefore here there is no cost for uh, purchasing organic uh, manure also i mean there is zero cost therefore it is called zero budget natural farming zero budget therefore because to end a reliance on loans as because of this introduction farmers can completely end their reliance on loans taken to make more expenditure and they can cut all types of production costs ending the debt cycle very importantly this is the most most uh, important issue of the farmers cost rising is the most important issue of the farmers therefore it can be avoided by using zero budget natural farming which has promoted chemical free agriculture and then very importantly this zero budget natural farming was announced by 2019 budget by government of india but it was actually promoted by maharashtra agriculture list and he has awarded padma shri padma shri award he is called subhash palekar subhash palekar in 1990s he took a concept to spread over to the country in 1990s now it has become famous in, the, in, in our country therefore therefore government of india has announced in 2019 budget about zero budget natural farming concept which promotes agricultural activities with chemical free and then reforex has been raised by reserve bank of india recently about 40 basis point 40 basis point see before that what is reforex see rbi whenever gives loan to the commercial banks rbi whenever gives loan to the commercial bank it is the rate at which rbi grants loan to the commercial bank which pay interest rate, which pay interest rate for short term for short term against collateral securities which have to be deposited with rbi and lateral repurchase securities after pre defined time i mean after pre defined time maturity time banks have to repurchase they have to take agreement that we have to repurchase after pre determined time this is called the rate repo rate repo rate means rbi rbi lends loan 
to the commercial banks for the short term by taking securities, collateral securities. When they are giving, when RBI is giving loan to the commercial banks, it fixes the interest rate that is called repo rate. Repo rate that has been increased by RBI about 50 basis points. See, it was in 2014, it was 8%. And it has been fallen down to 4% in 2020. But recently, RBI has again raised to 4.40% in, in the last week. And what about the reverse repo rate? It is a reverse repo rate is RBI is giving loan to the commercial bank. Reverse repo rate means RBI takes loan from commercial banks. And RBI pays interest rate to the commercial banks. That is called reverse Repo rate, the rate at which commercial banks grant loan to RBI, which pays interest rate. That is called repo rate. Always, always importantly, repo rate minus one. If repo rate is 4.40%, reverse repo rate will be 3.40%. That's it. One basis point is to be deducted. I mean, minus is less than one one basis point is less than repo rate for the reverse repo rate. It is the common criteria after repo rate is determined by RBI. And at the same time, RBI is also raised the cash reserve ratio. It also was increased by 50 basis points. 50 basis points. And it was 4%. Now it has been increased to 4 point. 0%. So 4% after 2020 and it has been increased to 4.50%. Why? What is the reason to increase CRR or repo rate? Very importantly, to bring down the inflation which is being occurred in our country. It is nearly 7% in our country. Very importantly, what is the cash reserve ratio? See, cash reserve ratio is nothing but we deposit our money in banks. And banks cannot lend the whole amount of money to the investors or loan takers. But, our, but commercial bank has to keep some portion of money with RBI, some portion of cash or money with RBI. That portion of money which is to be kept by kept with RBI is called cash reserve ratio, CRR. CRR is the rate at which is the rate which commercial banks have to keep with RBI. That is called cash reserve ratio. So what is the reason to increase, to importantly, reduce the inflation? How inflation will be occurred? Inflation is nothing but it is the situation of price rise. Price rise. Prices are hiked. It is the situation of hike in prices in general goods and services in the market. Why this has happened? Because people demand more for the goods and services in the market. Therefore, inflation has been occurred. Why people demand more? There is more money availability with employees or people. Employees or people. Why employees have taken more, uh, more money? Because more investment will be done on employees or production activities. For the production activities, employees uh, uh, people, I mean investors, invest more on employees and and production activities. Therefore, employees have taken more money. Why this investment is more by investors? Because banks, commercial banks, have lent more investment, more portion of money supplied to the investors. How these banks have got more money to lend the loan to the investors? One is from the depositors and another is the sources RBI. Major source is RBI. RBI lend the loan to the banks. I mean banks will take loan from RBI. When RBI is giving loan to the banks with lower interest rate, definitely they take more loans and they lend more to investors as because of earning more interest profit and it becomes more money supply to the employees. Employees demand more in the market and it is called full employment according to J.M. Keynes concept, full employment level, full employment level reached and then demand, demand, effective demand according to J.M. Keynes it is effective demand 
and is excess which is excess effective demand with is it is excess and it causes i we demand more therefore prices are high high in the market it is called inflationary situation if rbi is lending with higher interest rate what now it has been taken with higher interest rate definitely more less availability of uh, money supply to the bank loans to the bank and they supply less as investment to the investors and investors invest less on employees or factors of production or production and employees have got less money they do less demand on goods and services then there is as there is less i mean reduce in demand for the goods and services prices might be reduced in the future that is avoid of inflationary situation so rbi controls all these things in the money supply regarding money supply in the country through hiking interest rates or crr see now if interest rate has been raised it becomes costlier to the commercial banks to take loans therefore they take less money as loan and they lend less to the investors then money supply will be controlled at the same time cash reserve ratio also if it increases banks have to keep more money with rbi as because it is increase banks have to keep more money with rbi therefore money supply will be controlled in the country therefore to avoid inflationary situation in our country we will discuss separately about the uh, monetary controlling measures of rbi in in the separate class so this is the explanation regarding the reason for uh, increasing repo rates or cash reserve ratio the rbi to bring down the inflation and our last importantly the questions which we have to we have to answer in the comment box who is the governor of rbi there are four options shakti das shakti kam das raghuram rajan urjit patel and rang rajan and another question is monetary policy committee of rbi very importantly see as we have discussed crr has increased about 50 basis points repo rate has been increased about 40 basis point how this will be increased not only by one person very importantly this decision will be is to be taken by monetary policy committee which is there in uh, with rbi it is rbi monetary policy committee it consists of who it consists of whom the options rbi governor deputy governor of rbi executive director of rbi in, in charge of mpc three members nominated by government of india and all of the above answer in the comment box about this questions and then coming to the last class question swachh bharat mission swachh bharat mission was launched in year 2014 october 2nd october 2nd uh, in the day of mahatma gandhi ji's birthday 2014 2014 swachh bharat mission first phase first phase one was announced and in second phase was announced second phase was announced in 2021 on october 1st october 1st 2021 in the last year in the last year swachh bharat mission was launched so these are all about the today's news analysis current affairs so thank you everyone subscribe our channel please subscribe if you have not subscribe our channel please subscribe and click the bell button then you can get all the notifications by our channel and like and share our video importantly which will be helpful for the competitive exam writing students please support our channel thank you thank you everyone we'll meet in the next class